All right, there we go. Another build in the books. I don't think I'm 100% done with this boat yet. Uh, it really depends on when it sells. I'll probably go ahead and list it on Marketplace this week. But uh, I'd really like to play around with maybe adding a jack plate to it to get that motor up another inch to see if it really uh, affects the performance. As far as the boat today, um, I, I hit the nail on the head with the Yamaha. It got five miles per hour. Uh, I said five miles per hour, but I was really hoping that it would surprise me 
And that's one reason that I kind of would like to try out a jack plate to get that, you know, even with the bottom of the boat to see if it would make a difference or not. Uh, I'm just really interested in it. If you, I mean, even if you get like a, a one mile per hour increase, uh, I feel like, you know, if you, you know, 30 or 40 bucks, it's probably worth it. Uh, the trolling motor, this boat is a little more tippy than I thought it was going to be in the front. I'm sure it's, you know, you get used to it. But another thing I may do if I keep this boat for a um, considerable amount of time is add a seat base to that middle seat part or the, the front deck and put a, put a pedestal there. Because I feel like you would be more stable if you were sitting down using the foot control on the trolling motor. Um, hindsight, I think I would have been better off trying to figure out a way to do like a hand control, uh, just cause man, this thing is a little narrow and tippy. I'm not no little bitty dude. I mean, I'm, I'm short, but I'm, I'm wide. Uh, I weigh 190 pounds, so I'm not exactly, uh, designed for a 10 foot boat either. So I think this would be a great boat for someone, you know, you know, 60 pounds lighter or for even 40 pounds lighter than me. I'm not the uh, most graceful person you ever met. I wish I would have done closed cell foam on the bottom. And I don't know if you saw the video of me doing the foam on the bottom of the boat. Um, I couldn't find any width that I needed either by itself or stacking it to make it the height of the brace except for open cell foam. And it's like that foam that you see under the seats of the boat. Now, don't get me wrong, like, it's not the end of the world that I use that, but uh, you just really need to make sure that you don't let your boat sit in water. You need to make sure if you're sitting it outside, you have it elevated, you know, the back is at an angle with the bottom, and you have the plug out of it, because that open cell foam will retain water if it sits in it long enough. In hindsight, I wish I would have shopped around a little bit more and found some, some closed cell foam that would work for that. Uh, I wish I would have done a template for the hydro turf, which if you notice, I went around the front part of the boat and kind of mass some of the bad edges. And I mean, it, it looks good, but going forward from now on, if I do another boat, which I'm doing another boat, that one right there, make a template. Making a template is your best bet for doing hydro turf. It takes longer and it's a little more work, but it, it will make it, turn out a lot better. Uh, this was a fun little project. Uh, I hate that I got away from the budget part of it. I was wanting to come in around $1,500 and I came in at this right here, all total. And I mean, that number is a little high, but if you remember, if you watched the very first video, I started with that boat right there. So that boat is free. I mean, I could probably Fix a few things on that boat with stuff I have laying around. It won't cost me anything and get 200 bucks for it the way it sits. You know, fixing them, the, it has three leaks in it, three holes. I could fix those, won't cost me anything out of pocket and easily get 200 bucks off of it. So you could knock $200 off that total, uh, you know, or just say, hey, I got another boat with the whole deal. So, I mean, I don't necessarily have that amount in the boat so you could not like i said knock 200 bucks off and that puts us pretty close to the 1500 range i said i could have cut some more corners this trolling motor kind of ate my lunch and in hindsight now that now i know i learned that uh, a boat this narrow up front uh, you really don't want a foot control trolling motor uh, like i said i wish i would have with a hand control and that i'm not sure if i could have found one i might have still had to buy one but they are a little bit cheaper than foot controlled. So I, I might have been able to save 50 to 100 bucks on that. And you know, they sell trolling motors, the hand controlled trolling motors that deploy just like foot control, just like this one set up. So uh, I doubt that I explore that option unless I just happen to run into somebody that is looking for a foot control and wants to trade or something. Uh, I could definitely use this trolling motor on another build like that one right there. But like I said, you know, that's just hindsight crap. Oh, uh, the trailer pull is really good. It could use new tires. You know, they're a little dry rotted, but they got a lot of tread on them. Uh, I like the way the boat looks. I think, you know, I had a picture of it in my mind, how I wanted it to look at the end. And I think I pretty much nailed it. I, I, I like the look. I like the black and tan or black and wood. That's exactly what I was going for. 
and uh, I think it turned out good. You know, we used cheaper paint, and I've kind of been, you know, banging around on it and stuff, and I only had like one little chip up front. Uh, it did scratch some when I was doing the template when I was running that pencil around the edge. I don't know if you guys recall that. And I had to touch that up because it left a red mark down it, which you may, I probably would have come off with some acetone. But uh, besides that, I mean, the paint seems to be holding up pretty good. Granted, I've only taken it out once. But I feel like I'm going to take this boat out a lot more than that because uh, I really want to do some uh, experimenting with that transom on this boat and the, the motor and stuff. Well, all right, guys. Uh, this is going to conclude this video. Uh, this series, really, I, I, like I said, I might do another video on, you know, a jack plate, but that's going to, I'm not going to tie it to this series. It's just going to be a standalone. But besides that, you know, it's, that's it. We just hit 5,000 subscribers, and I know that's that's just a drop in the bucket as far as YouTube is. You know, you have people with millions of subscribers, but I think it's really, really cool, you know, me being able to, to fool around with these boats, and I have close to 5,000 people interested in it, which I'm sure a lot of those people aren't really engaged in watching videos and stuff, but still, uh, it kind of tickles me. And I, I really appreciate it, all you guys that like and comment on all the videos. And I'm still at that, that point where I, I'm able to read all the comments and I try to reply to a lot of them. Uh, you know, some of them, it's, it's hard to reply the same thing over and over and over. Thanks, dude. Thanks, buddy. You know, but like I said, I really appreciate it. I mean, it, it, it makes me smile every time I get a positive comment. But that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Next up is probably this boat. Uh, the boat that I originally had with this is a 12, I think it's a 1232. Uh, I couldn't really figure out the make of it. Everybody said something different. I thought it was a Sears and it was like 20 different things got thrown out there, but it's a pre hole ID boat. And I really think I'm going to do a budget build on it, like for real budget build. I might even do a wood floor in it and uh, maybe a wood deck because I have plywood sitting here. But I haven't decided yet if I want to do like a mini series on it or do just like one video start to finish. I'm trying to buy another boat from Amanda's neighbor. If you follow me on my personal Instagram page, you've already seen that. It's an older fiberglass boat, uh, more of a bay boat than a bass fishing or ski boat. But I just, I really, I personally want this boat. I just cannot meet up with this dude to save my life. I don't know what kind of schedule he works, but it seems to be worse than mine. But I really want that boat. It's an Ashcraft. I don't know if any of you guys have, are familiar with that. Not a whole lot of information that I've found so far on them. But I'm really, really hoping that that is my next series because I would like to do that boat. I have like I have it in my head of what this boat is going to look like if I get a hold of it and finish it. And uh, Amanda's friend lives down in Mobile Bay. And I would love to take it down there and drop it off and let her help me sell it because I, it would get a lot more money down there than it would get here. But like I said, man, I mean, doing these John boats, yeah, it's fun, but man, it gets so monotonous. So um, that's why I really want to do something a little bit different. And that's why I really, really, really want that boat. I, I got to I gotta catch up with that dude. He told Amanda that he would sell it, but since then I haven't been able to get in touch with him. That was like six months ago. Maybe I need to talk to his wife. That'd probably be a little bit better deal for me. She's probably tired of looking at that boat in her yard. I appreciate all the views, all the comments, the likes, everything if you guys are sharing. I kind of want to hang my hat on not being one of those channels that ask for people to subscribe like and comment and all that because that's cringy to me uh don't get offended if you have your own youtube channel and you do that that's just that's just not my style uh, i don't want to ask for it so i feel like this channel's growth has been 100 percent organic i feel like that's something to hang my hat on but anyways i really appreciate it and i will see you guys on the next one